We, we, we have to move beyond just looking at the Antichrist as the man that's going to show up one day. Not to say that's not going to happen because it is going to happen. But long before the person of the Antichrist shows up, all of us have to overcome the Antichrist spirit. Amen. All of us may not have to face the Antichrist man, but all of us will have to overcome the Antichrist spirit. Amen. It is a spirit that fights the power of God. It's anti-power. If God is going to bring his power back to the forefront of the church, then we as a people must understand that we must overcome the Antichrist spirit. Amen. And, and I don't know how long I'm going to stay here. But I'm going to stay here for, for one more uh, um, um, impartation um, con, uh, dealing with this spirit. Because this is we must overcome this spirit in order to follow Christ. Amen. Nobody gets around the Antichrist spirit. Nobody can just walk with God without engaging the Antichrist spirit. We must overcome the Antichrist spirit in order to walk with Christ. That's every believer. It's every believer. And so I want to do some equipping and some downloading today in that vein. Um, and I believe this is, we dealt with Antichrist spirit just one time. Is that right? Twice already? So this is the third time. I lost count. I lost count. But so, so this is part three in that. And so we thank God for that. Can we get excited? My daughter just walked in. All right. And, and, Ms. and her, her, her classmate and friend, Miss Rihanna, hello there. All the way from Winston-Salem University. And so we're glad that she is here uh, with us today. We are so proud of her. Amen. We're so proud of her. An amazing, an amazing... Uh, uh, just what God is doing in her life. I'm so excited just listening to her talk and what God is doing and the way he's moving is amazing. That I, I'm just thankful. I, sh I truly am. Amen. Um, if you could, you can go to the book of 1 John. I think we're going to, we're going to get there. 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Let's, let's, let's uh, work there for a moment. Uh, amen. And I do want you to notice as you look around, there are certain individuals that are carrying prayer badges. And I want you to know if they have one of those badges, on as we believe in ministry through prayer we believe in ministry through the laying on of hands and things of that nature when we get in those moments these are individuals who have been um, um, certified who who have been trained and who walk with God at a measure where they are entrusted to help minister to you and to pray over you and to lay hands if necessary that they're not just random people amen but these are individuals that that um, the hand of God is on and who have the, the um, commendation of their leadership to help us release ministry into the lives of those who need it. So if you see somebody with that badge, they may um, ask to pray with you. Amen. During service, whether you come to the altar or not, and just understand that they have been released to do so. Amen. They've been released to do so. All right. Let's go to First John chapter 2. And, and verse number 15. First John chapter 2, verse number 15. Very, very familiar for verse. Um, it's quoted quite often. And I do want to, I want to dig this verse out. And I want to reveal some, some, some fresh things that the Lord has deposited into my spirit. And I'm going to tie it to the Antichrist spirit. Amen. Because we got to understand that one of the major um, operations of the Antichrist spirit is to pervert the love of God. It, the, the Antichrist spirit doesn't deny the love of God. The Antichrist spirit perverts the love of God. Amen. 
And so we're going to, to, to look at this so we can be equipped. First uh, John chapter 2, verse number 15. Um, the Bible says this. The Bible says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Everybody say in him. Yeah. I'm going to read that verse one more time and then we'll, we'll park there and work from that place. I will hit other verses, but I want to start in that verse. First John chapter 2 verse number 15 again says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Father, we thank you. And we bless you right now that your word is quick. And your word is powerful. And it's sharper than any double-edged sword. We thank you for the penetrating power of the anointing. We thank you, Lord God, for the work of the spirit of the living God to come and bear witness behind your word. Lord God, that life can be released in the room. That yokes can be destroyed in the room. That men may be translated out of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Lord God, I decree as you have declared, let there be light. On this day, God, let the power of God be exemplified and demonstrated. Let the kingdom of God be released. Jesus roar as the lion of the tribe of Judah on this morning. Lord God, let us hear you roar on this morning, God. Shake us and awake us. We thank you for an awakening in the room, God. We bless you and thank you. That we, we do it by your spirit. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Somebody just give God a good praise real quick as you sit down. Just give him a good praise as you sit down. Uh, First John chapter 2. Now, now I'm going to read this verse again. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull some stuff out of here. That will help everything else make sense. That I'm going to share with you today. First John chapter 2 and verse number 15 says. Love not the world. Watch this. Neither the things that are in the world. Uh, and we're going to work on that in a minute. On the back side. But I want to get to this latter half first. He says because if any man love the world. The love of the father is not in him. The apostle John. I want you to notice his wording. Because his wording has a purpose behind it. The apostle John specifically speaks of the love of God being in you. Somebody shout in you. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Everybody say in him. See, this is the first delineation in this if we don't get this, nothing else will make sense. God doesn't just want to love on you. God wants to love in you. Follow me and follow me well. He loves in us. He doesn't just love on me. His love is meant to be loved in me. Now, what does that mean? That means his love occupies his love has an occupying function what am I saying? his love moves in glory be to God he, he, to occupy means to take up or control a space if I'm occupying this space I have taken up and I control this space his love comes in and controls a space called you and me he wants control of this space his love in us 
He wants to occupy this space. He wants to move in to this space with his love. And, and the good news about that and what I want you to understand about that is his love won't share space with other things. If he, glory be to God, if he moves in, he loves in you. His love isn't just designed for me, but in me to operate as an occupier and move out everything that doesn't reflect his love for me. What, what are you saying, apostle? He, he loves in me. He runs out everything out of me that doesn't reflect his love for me. His love in me won't leave nothing in me that can bind me. Glory be to God. His love in me won't leave addiction in me. His love in me won't leave perversion in me. His love in me won't leave dysfunction in me. His love in me won't leave depression in me. His love in me won't leave sin in me. Everything in me has to face his love in me and his love never fails. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he loves in me. Now, a lot of people think I'm making that up about love because an antichrist spirit just wants us to believe that God loves on us. But God's love on us won't free us. Only God's love in us frees us. He don't just want to love on you. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But his love throws stuff out. My God, his love evicts stuff. His, his love sets stuff out. His love moves stuff that don't, he don't want to be there. And a lot of things, okay, Apostle, you making that up. Can you put up First John 4 and 18? There, come on, glory, come on, let's, let's move on. There is no fear in, but perfect love cast it out fear because fear hath torment God doesn't just love on us but in us because that's his means of freeing us come on his love liberates his love in us doesn't leave mess in us his love in us gets the mess out of us how do I know he loves me because what used to be in me ain't in me no more how do I know he loves me because what I used to have in me ain't in me no more there was stuff that I used to want to do that that one ain't there no more there's stuff that I wanted to stop that I couldn't stop that ain't there anymore I know he loves me because his love cast some stuff out I know God loves me you don't know what was in me hey glory be to God you don't know what was in me before I got here. You don't know what was in me when I was raised in my home. You don't know what was in me. But love showed up. Glory be to God. And love didn't just love on me. He loved in me. He got inside of the dirtiness in me. He got inside of the dysfunction in me. He got inside of the mess in me. Somebody shout, he loves in me. Now watch this. The Antichrist spirit. Now I got to get to the Antichrist spirit because th this is what we're dealing with because it perverts the love of God. The Antichrist spirit works to get us to accept God's love for us but reject the Father's love in us. So follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. He has no problem with you walking around knowing God loves me. Got no problem with you feeling, feeling goosebumps when you play certain songs about how God loves you. And he'll always be there for you. And he'll always be there to comfort you. He wants us to accept a version of love that doesn't free us. So many, no, love casts stuff out. Love don't just cuddle us. Love just don't make us feel better when we mess up. Love gets in and gets the mess out that keeps messing us up. So many believers, so many believers 
know how to receive God's love for them, but not God's love in them. So we'll know God loves us outwardly, but yet be bound inwardly. Because the Father loving on me is of a different nature than the Father loving in me. The Father loving on me, he loves on me to comfort me. He loves in me to empower me. Come on, when I get the love of God in me, it makes me strong. When I get the love of God in me, it gives me grace to overcome. It's not the love of the, the Father's love for me that say, I'm going to get in trouble right here. It's not the Father's love for me that saves me. Everybody in sin right now, the Father loves them. But if his love ain't in them, God's love for me isn't what saves me. God's love for me, in me, is what saves me. His love for me opens me up for his love in me. One works with the other, but if I stop at his love for me and never get his love in me, then I'll never be saved. Perfect love casts stuff out. Come on, God. Perfect love shows up and says, get out. Come on, perfect love shows up and says, come on, anxiety, get out. Perfect love shows up and says, perversion, get out. Perfect love shows up and says, pornography, get out. So the Antichrist spirit works to get us to embrace a version of love that doesn't save us. I know he loves me, but it ain't saving me from nothing. Glory be to God. Any version of love that leaves stuff in me that is allowed to bind me is of the Antichrist spirit. When God's love is in you, stuff has to leave you. I need somebody to shout, God loves me. My God, he loves me too much to leave me like this. He loves me too much to struggle with this. You will not struggle with that for the rest of your life. You just need to get a new tenant called love. Perfect love will come right on in and begin to move stuff right on out. Now, now how does this love work? Can I, can I just teach on How does this love work? I'm going to go back to the scripture. First of all, we need to understand that God's ultimate purpose isn't to just love on us, but to love in us. He wants to love in us. Amen. He wants to love on us from the inside. Amen. He wants to love on us from the inside. Now, that, that's key in understanding how uh, and being able to discern the work of the Antichrist spirit. Now, watch this. Uh, let me go a step further. How does he love in us? What is, how does he express his love in us? And, and there's an answer in the word of God. First John chapter three, verse number one says here behold it's one of my favorite scriptures i quote it all the time behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us now, come on what, what manner of love in other words what manner of love is in us that we should be called everybody say called oh. the sons of god the father's love bestowed upon us or the father's love in us is seen in our calling. We are called sons of God. That's not a call in reference to a summons only. Our problem is we think being called son of God is saying come here. That's not what that call he's talking about. It's the Greek word kaleo and we're getting that in a minute. That's not a call in reference of calling you by who you know yourself as. It's not calling you by who you know yourself as nor is it just telling you to come here. That word kaleo means watch this and I'm going to make it make sense in a minute to name by name. To name by name. To endow God's love in us or he loves us by calling us. He, 
His love is expressed in us by calling us. He calls us like he assigned Adam to call all the animals what they were. If you look at the word call, see, because God, watch this, because we got to understand what Adam did to understand what he's saying when he calls us sons of God. When Adam was created, God said, I want you to name all of the animals. I want you to, he didn't say name, he said, I want you to call them. So I want you to call every animal. Look at Genesis 2 verse 19. Glory to God. And watch this. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto to see what he would And whatsoever Adam, every living creature, that was the name thereof. Every animal became what it became by being called. I'm trying to help you understand something up in here. When Adam called the animal, he named it by name. He did not describe the tiger. He called the tiger. And when he called it tiger, it got its stripes. He didn't say, I'm going to give you stripes. The stripes came with the call. He didn't, glory be to God. He didn't say, I'm going to give you claws. The claws came with the call. Glory be to God. When he got to the elephant, he did not describe the elephant. All he did was say elephant. And in the call, the elephant got the trunk. Y'all missing what I'm saying up in here. In other words, the characteristics were built into the call. What I call you, I don't just call you. I give you the characteristics of what I call you. Beloved, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God and it does not get a... When he calls us sons, he's giving us the characteristics of the Son of God. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying? There is no greater love than that to be called a son by God. In other words, the Son is holy. The Son is victorious. The Son can't be bound. Come on, glory be to God is anointed. Glory be to God. The son prospers in all that he does. And God says, I call you that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I call you a son of God. In other words, holiness ain't a responsibility, baby. That's a call. I ain't got to try to be holy. I got it built in in the call. When he called me a son, he called me holy. When, glory be to God. When he called me a son, he called me righteous when he called me a son he called me one who has victory over sin victory over sin is not a responsibility that's a call if I'm not getting victory over sin I ain't answered my call yet that's a characteristic if I ain't living holy I ain't answered my call yet see we're talking about calling or preaching but what about calling a sonship I don't know about y'all, but I've been wake. Yes, Lord. I ain't trying to rev up. I've been wake. I've been up. I've been up. The call gives us the characteristics. Do you know what you're called? I'm going to say that again. The call gives you the characteristics. A cat didn't need to know how to be taught how to meow. In being called a cat, it could meow. A dog didn't need to be taught how to bark. And being called a dog, it knew how to bark. Y'all hear what I'm saying? A draft didn't need to be taught how to have a long neck. And be 
king a giraffe it had a long neck it's calling gave it its characteristics beloved you are called the sons of God and it does not yet appear does not yet appear what we shall be Tell your neighbor, I'm called. My God, I'm answering my call. I lay hands on the sick and they recover because I'm called that. I cast out devils because I'm called that. I live in liberty because I'm called that. I walk in freedom because I'm called that. I don't succumb to temptation because I'm called that. I don't live in sin because I'm called that. I walk in holiness because I'm called that. I didn't earn that. It was the love of God. Behold the love of God. Be loving that we should be called. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm called. In the calling comes the characteristics. What manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm called. Being obedient is not a requirement, it's, a, it's our calling. I don't have to be obedient. I received the call of obedience when he called me son. My sonship gives me obedience. I'm not working to obey. I'm trying to obey God. You ain't answered your call yet. I'm trying to live right. You ain't answered the call yet. Because, beloved, we should be called the sons of God. And Jesus ain't trying to live right. This is what the Antichrist spirit really wants to do. Jesus, glory be to God. Jesus ain't trying with all his might not to. You ain't answered your call yet. Glory be to God. The Antichrist doesn't want you to answer your call. And he wants you to dummy down your call to a duty. He wants you to dummy down your call to a duty. Say, I'm called to preach. I'm, I'm called to prophesy. I'm, I'm called to pastor. No, you're called a son. Don't you dare dummy down what you're called to do. The first call and the only call is the call of a son. Beloved, we should be called the sons of God. I don't know if you're going to preach, but I know me and you got the same call. I don't know if you're going to prophesy, but I know me and you got the same call. I don't know if you ever go run a church, but me and you got the same call. Within the call, I'm good. Within the call comes the characteristics. To the degree I have the characteristics, I've said yes to the call. To the degree I don't have the characteristics, I, through the work of the Antichrist, have rejected the call. The Antichrist spirit wants us to reject our call. Man, you're free. No, I ain't. I'm still struggling with this. Why are you rejecting your call? You don't work your way into freedom. You get called into it. You know, you're free. No, I ain't. I'm, I just got to work through this one thing. Once I break free from this, you don't break free from nothing. You're called into it. There is no greater love than to be called what? Sons of God. There's no greater call than that. Amen? Because I can't be bound. Because of my calling. I'm not, I, my calling won't allow me to be bound. My calling won't allow me to be defeated. My calling won't allow me to live in sin. Me living in sin is like a dog, dog running around meowing and a cat running around barking. It just ain't even in their nature. My God, it ain't in my nature to lose. I can't lose. I need somebody to understand I'm called.
called a winner. God, I need you to shout, I'm called a winner. My God, I was called a winner. I, I was called victorious. I was called to know I got to overcome. No, I don't. I was called that. But then the calling is the characteristics. How do I know I've answered my call? Because I'm living out the characteristics of a son of God. I've answered the call. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that understands you got a call on your life? Is there anybody in here that can celebrate the fact that you're called that? That you don't have to earn that? That you don't have to work yourself into that? That you don't have to strive for that? That you don't have to fight for that? You can just open your ears to the call. Come on, glory be to God. You have a call of God on your life to be a son of God. Being free is our calling. Amen. I, I received the characteristic called free through the call. Come on. Living fruitful and productive is a calling. If you abide in me and my word abideth in you, you shall bear much fruit. What's that saying is you'll be productive. What's that, what that saying is you'll accomplish great things. What, what that saying is your life will change the world around you. And you don't have to figure out what you got to do to change the world around you. You're called the world changer. You ain't got to figure out what to do to be productive. You're called productive. And the, oh, glory be to God. Beloved, now we are the. Should be called. That's a calling. Amen. That's a calling. And so many people are frustrated because they're trying to earn what they can only be called into. Why can't I walk in that? Because you don't earn, you can't fight your way into it. You can't break your way into it. You have to say yes to a call into it. You got to learn that when you're bound, God calls you free. When you're down, God calls you up. Come on. Glory be to God. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. I don't let my circumstance call me. There's only one that can call me. Amen. And see, our problem is we don't have enough people in our lives that know how to call us. Come on. We, are, we got too many people in our lives that know how to critique us. I don't need you to critique me. I need you to call me. Come on. If you know I'm called to be a son of God, I need you to look beyond my faults. Y'all hear me? And see my needs. I need you to see a hidden treasure in this earthen vessel. I need you to be able to look beyond your observations and all of your X's and O's of what's wrong and what's right and still call me a son. Still call me a daughter. Still call me righteous. Still call me victorious. Where are the folk that know how to give a call God doesn't just require these things he don't require us to be obedient that's a call anybody that's obedient just answered their call anybody that's free just answered their call anybody that's overcome is just answering their call anybody who's enduring is just answering their call those are all characteristics of the Son of God. Beloved, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? The Antichrist spirit works to get many in the church to reject their call as sons of God. It works to disqualify us from receiving our call. Amen. Come on. It's just a call. That's all it is. Victory is just a call. It's just a call away. Come on. Hallelujah. Liberty is just a call away. Strength is just a call away. Breakthrough is just a call away. How does the enemy get us to reject our call? 1 John 2.15. See what 1 John 2.15 says? Love not the world, 
neither the things that are. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not what? The Antichrist spirit uses the love of the world to keep the love of the Father from being in us. Why, why, why am I not walking in my calling? Because you can't, we can't have the love of God in us to the degree we love the world. So the Antichrist spirit works to, make, to entice us into worldliness, to make the world attractive, to make the world engaging, to make the world exciting, to make the world seem like I can get what I want from it, that it has what I need, that there's, all, there's constant images, our phone is constantly going off, and it's all screaming at us saying, love the world. Why? Because he knows if I can get you to love the world, you will never answer your call. You will, ne- glory be to God, you'll never answer your call to be the son of God. You'll always talk about the works that he did, but you'll never talk about the works that you did in greater. It'll never be who you you are I will disqualify you through enticing you into an attraction for the things that are passing away amen to 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 the degree we love the world we can't be called sons of God there's only one thing that keeps us from being called sons of God love of the world we can't receive our calling I don't care how much church we get we won't receive our calling. I don't care how much word we learn. We won't receive our calling. I don't care how much anointing we're under. We won't receive our calling. I don't care how many move of God we experience. We can't carry the characteristics of Christ as long as we love the world. If you don't get nothing else, I say, I need you to get that. I want revival bad. It don't matter how bad you want it if you love the world. I want to see God heal. I want to see God change. I want to see God make this out. It don't matter how much bad we want it if we love the world. That call, we're exempt from that call as long as we love the world. Amen? So the Antichrist spirit causes us to reject Christ. The Antichrist spirit causes us to reject. Do you understand that there are people who come to church every week that reject Christ? Amen? How? Because Christ's purpose is to give us his characteristics. If I reject his characteristics, guess what I'm doing? I'm rejecting. We don't even know when we're rejecting Christ. Now, he was that way, but I'm still a mess. I'm just a mess. He, he was righteous, but I'm unrighteous. He was, he was clean, but I'm just filthy. I'm just a wretch. I'm just, we are actually, that is not being humble. That's being in error. He does not call you a wretch. <laughs> he, don't, he, ain't, he ain't never calling you and me wretch. He ain't never calling me and you just a sinner saved by grace. He ain't never calling us, you can't be like my son Jesus. But he did. But you're nothing. He's everything and you're nothing. He never said that. What he said was, what manner of love had the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called sons? That's the Antichrist spirit. That's not humility. It's not humility. It's not humility. Amen? That's the spirit of the Antichrist to keep us in a place where we won't walk in his power and answer our call. Amen? Religion will get mad when you start talking about being obedient to God and walking in victory. Why? Because they haven't answered their call. And they tried and tried and tried. I've tried to live free. I've tried to, to, to so I use my duty to, to overshadow my condition. But I work hard for God. I do everything I can for God. Amen. And I still ain't right. And you'll get mad at the one who walks in victory because you think you can strive your way into it. You think they got there because they worked. If they're way, nobody works into that. You just answer a call. Amen. 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 There will always be anger in the church because the people who are, are bound will always be mad at the people who are free. 
Ishmael will always have a problem with Isaac. Amen? So, so, to the degree we're not walking in the characteristics of Christ, we've rejected him. Amen? Because it's not limited to a verbal acknowledgement, but it is also an inward experience. It's an inward experience. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. For if you love the world, you will not have the inward experience of the love. The love of God will not be in you. You'll always know he loves you, but his love will never be able to change you. Because it's not his love for you that changes you. It's his love in you that changes you. Amen? Amen. So, so, so now watch this. He goes on to say this. And I'm going to read it. Everybody still with me? Come on, y'all still with me? Y'all still tracking? You're tracking? 1 John 3 verse 1. Look what it says. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. When we answer, I need y'all to get that because that's a reason to run around this building. That's a reason to shout and that's a reason to dance. I'm going to read it one more time and I'm going to let y'all, I hope for y'all, this hits your heart. But behold, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world, because we're called sons of God, because we've answered our call, the world knows us not because it knew him not. When we answer the call as sons, the world doesn't know us. See, glory be to God. The world can't call us because the world don't know us. See, once I answer my call to God, the world can no longer call me. You can't call me depressed. You don't know me. You can't call me having nervous breakdowns. You don't know me. You can't call me divorced. You don't know me. You can't call me heavy. You don't know me. You can't call me in bondage. The world knows us not. If you don't know my name, you can't call me. When we answer the call, the world knows us not. They'll look at us and say, well, they should be depressed. Well, they, they, they should have post-traumatic stress syndrome. Well, they should have scars from the way they were treated when they are young. I don't have an explanation of why they're walking in joy. I don't have an explanation why they're not dysfunctional. I don't have an explanation. I don't know what to call them. They're different. They're, I call them victims. Victorious. I, I call them overcomers. The world knows us. People don't know you when you're a son of God. They be trying to, they be trying to get the 411 on you. They be watching you. They be trying to figure you out. Amen. I know folk can't figure me out. Amen. Because the only thing you can do is use how you know what you're going through to, to, to figure out what I'm going through. But I ain't going through what you're going through. Amen. 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 That's me and your testimony. I ain't going through what you're going through. Don't try to get the 411 on me. Don't try to get the drop on me. The world knows us. I love it because I figured out that in the spirit I can now I don't have to answer the calls of the world just like we don't have to answer spam calls glory be to God God then hooked us up he then showed us when spam is calling y'all hear what I'm saying he then showed us when it's a scammer that's calling us so we don't even have to pick up the phone oh no 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 depression come knocking calling me that's a scam. Defeat come calling me. That's a scam. Depression come calling me. That's a scam. I'm just going to let that phone ring. I'm not going to pick that up. I got to call an ID. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I got me an iPhone. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all better get an iPhone.
We're wasting our time answering calls by scammers. Don't pick it up. You don't know you might be divorced one day. That's a scammer. Don't even pick that up. The world knoweth us. I know the folk that know me, and this is an unidentified number. This is an unidentified call. This is an unidentified individual, and I will not pick up the phone. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, don't pick up the phone. Anybody got a spam call lately from the devil? Anybody got a spam call lately from the kingdom of darkness? Anybody said just let it read? Don't you answer that? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll look at that phone and it'll say Mount Pleasant, Florida. I don't know nothing from Mount Pleasant, Florida. I'll look at my phone and it'll say darkness. I don't know nobody that knows my number. I didn't give darkness my number. They have no right to be calling me. Recognize when it's a scam. And stop picking up the phone. You're free. If freedom ain't calling, don't answer the phone. If joy ain't calling, don't answer the phone. If victory ain't calling, don't answer the phone. See, sometimes what scammers do is they will call you while you're talking to somebody you're supposed to be talking to and you'll mess around and put who you're supposed to be talking to on hold to talk to somebody you shouldn't even be talking to in the first place. Is there anybody? I just need you to get your destiny off a of hold. Your click back over. Click, you are not defeated. Click back over. You are not down. Try to click back over. Stop putting destiny on hold. You're called the son of God. I need somebody to shout up in here that understands your call. I dare you to stand to your feet for just about 10 seconds and bless the God of Israel that has showed his love. I'm perverted. Man, that's spam. I'm addicted, man, that's spam. What's this? Look at me tell your neighbor, they don't know me. They don't know, they don't know who I am. Eh? Make me get hood up here. You don't know who I be. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch this. Now watch this. I want to go this. And I'll show you this. Somebody shout victory over the Antichrist. Amen. I'm telling you, your life will get much more victorious when you stop answering, answering calls from folk you don't know. Amen. The world, the world will try to diagnose you and they don't know you. So you'll be walking around with stuff that don't even fit you. They don't even fit you who you are. I'm not walking around saying I have, you know, I don't know, man. Sometimes I say, I don't want to say it, but I do want to say it. Can I get in trouble when I say stuff sometimes? People feel like he's just so insensitive. Uh, my God. Can 
Can I help you understand something? Lady, because we're going to have a lot of babies in here. Don't let postpartum call you. That don't know you. Of course it's going to call. It's going to see if you're going to pick up. Spam call. And continue blessing your God. Trauma's going to call you. you. Anybody had trauma in your life? It's, um, it amazes me how much perversion has been interweaved into family where people of the same family will molest the younger women and the younger girls. And I want to tell you that trauma's going to call you 10 and 15 years later to see if you'll still pick up the call. But I just want you to know something up in here today. There's somebody else that wants to call you called old things have passed away and all things have become new. You got another call. Ain't that good? I don't know about it. I feel like shouting. I just want to dance and shout. Y'all waiting on me to say something. I just, can I praise God just for a minute? Glory be to God. God, I bless you you. God, I thank you. Can somebody bless him with me that knows that God is a good God? Can we just make a joyful noise in the house of God? Can we bless him in the... Young people, y'all better stop letting that devil call you. You better stop picking up them calls. It's, it's too hard because everybody around me is doing it. That's a call. That's a, that's a scammer. Trying to get stuff that don't belong to him. You're an overcomer. Pick up the phone. Your feelings don't have victory over you. Pick up the phone. First John chapter 2. We're about to close. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've never experienced as much freedom as I experience now when I learn how to use my caller ID. You got to learn how to use your spiritual caller ID. Shadam darabahatabako. I ain't going to try to call you and tell you, you and your spouse have irreconcilable differences. There's just walls up that we can't get past. And it's calling. And it's a scammer. To try to get leverage in a marriage, it has no right to have leverage in. God, I feel the anointing, man. I feel grace to I feel grace to triumph I feel it watch this 1st John chapter 2 I'm almost done amen everybody wake now let's get with it get with me get with me all right 1st John chapter 2 verse 15 watch this it says love not the world Neither the things that are in the world, watch this, for if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then it goes on to expound on the explanation of why. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. Then it goes and takes it the step further to help us get back to home base. Verse 17, and the world passes away. And the lust thereof. 
But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. How, how in the world? Oh, glory. Yeah, we can clap. Let's clap for the word of God. It's just power in reading, man. I felt glory. I'm so glad somebody else felt the power in that, man. I read the word of God, and I got to stop sometimes. I ain't even heard nothing. I just read it, and it hit my ears in a way where I got to walk around my desk about 10 times because something hit me, and I don't even understand it yet. It's the power of his word. Man. Lust. How do I know whether the love of God is in me or the Antichrist has deceived me with lust? You know how I know? Because a lot of people, I, I, I guarantee you that we as believers haven't been taught like sufficiently to discern between the love of God in us and lust. So many sometimes, and it's not on purpose, and it's not out of malice, and it's not because we're wicked, but, but the enemy is a master deceiver. I think it's his love, but I'm actually in lust. How can I discern that? I mean, I want to, I want to help you. Lust passes away. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away. How do I know it's lust? Because I got it, but I don't keep it. It's passion that passes away. I was passionate about church at one time, but I ain't passionate like I used to. Well, maybe it was lust. Because love is everlasting. Strength passes away. I was strong, but I just ain't, you know, I was. Commitment passes away. Amen. You ever hear people say stuff like, I just don't love you no more. Well, that means all you ever did was lusted after me. Because love don't pass away. And our problem is we're getting married out of lust and not love. So we're saying I do on the wedding day and I don't in six months. Because I just ain't got the feeling no more. I just can't do it no more. I just can't work with you no more. I just can't listen to that no more. I just can't deal with that no more. You know why? It was doomed from the beginning. It can't last. Anything that the world generated in us cannot last. It's going to pass away. How do I know sometimes whether it's lust to love, I'll see how long it lasts. Amen? What we'll do is we will mess around and let lust give us a 10-year sentence. So we will go and buy a $40,000 car hmm. on a 10-year loan. That's a long time. Yeah. Maybe that's a five years. Okay. Like, dog, you killing us for real, possible. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad. So, 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 so what happens is this. When I first bought the car, I loved it. I love this car. Oh, look at what God did for me. I'm even going to get a license plate that say God's blessing. <laughs> Favor, no, what about this one, baby? Favor of God. <laughs> and for the first six months, I'm washing it every week. I'm vacuuming it. You know, I'm loving that. I'm riding to work feeling good. Work ain't even that hard because I get to jump in my new car. Glory be to God. That black car with them peanut butter seats. It's something about peanut butter seats. They just give me. I want peanut butter. I just. I'm. I'm supposing myself. Peanut butter seats. 
<laughs> and I'm riding to work. It don't even feel like I'm working. Why? Because I love my car. Six months later. Six months later, I ain't washing it every week no more. I ain't picking the crumbs up no more. I finally let my guard down and I let the kids eat in the back seat. Come on, y'all know I'm talking up in here. Once you do that, ever you heard y'all 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 heard the parents they're like, oh, <laughs> that's it. It ain't new no more. As soon as you let them have a meal, that's it. Six months later, it's okay. But three years later, I'm still paying for it. And now, the time I could be using to glorify God, I got to pay for something that I don't even want that much no more. I got to work extra hours just to pay for what I said God gave me that took me from God. God. That, my brothers and sisters, is the work of the Antichrist. Then once that passes away, I got to find something else to be passionate about. Amen? And then it's... Then it's it's, it's different. He said, I just want you to love something that's going to pass away. I just want you to, you know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong, because I'm exposing myself. Me, I like shoes. I love shoes. I, I ain't going to say I love. Oh, see that? <laughs> I like shoes. Right? I like baseball caps. I love baseball caps. Right? I love suits. Right? Huh? I mean, I said it. Oh! God! I'm telling you, man, this is crazy. Help us, shit. Say it again. I like. Suits and ties. Why do I need to keep it there? Because it's going to pass away. And if. I put my passion in something that's passing away. I am too. When it goes down, I go down. But love is eternal. Love abides, this is the way he put it, abides forever. As long as the enemy can get us to mingle lust and love, he can keep us up and down. When we're walking in love, we're up, and when we succumb to lust, we're down. And so this is why many saints are like this, because they don't know when they're in love and in lust. So we're just, we're just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But then God says, what I want to do is, I need to come in and bind the spirit of the Antichrist. Because I'm ready to put you up and you stay up. Come on, we going up, up. Up. Hey, ain't nothing to go here. We're going from glory. The only other stop after glory is to another glory. And the only other stop, I never go down. I only go up and then I only go up again and then I only go up again. God said, I want to put you up and you stay up. Ain't no Humpty Dumpties in the kingdom of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I ain't going to fall and be broken and not be able to be put back together. But I have to bind the spirit of the Antichrist, that which causes me to be passionate about what's passing away. Amen? I was going to share this scripture, but I'm stopping here. Perhaps we'll hit it next time. Komandada. Soto toboko shita dabaka. Hotata 
Kotanda barata da bakoro to to da kiata. Ri tende ba de ba konde da basata. Everybody stand into your feet. Come on. Konda baba ko baba bakashata yata. Roto ndo do do ko shita. Runda da da ba kansata. Come on. I need you to pray in here if you got if you Come on, just begin to, to, to begin to softly begin to pray unto the God. Come on. Lift, lift something in the room right now. Rena man sando bokonda nan si te de de beke. Rono no no sonda nan nan sanda da da bahande de de be kon si tanda da bahata. What manner of love have the Father bestowed upon us on this morning that we should be called the sons of God? There's a calling on your life. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to fight for it. You can just accept your call. You can be named by name. Kaleo. Calling. Perhaps you're here today. And you want prayer to receive your calling as a son of God I didn't hear it like that and I know faith comes by hearing and I'm, I'm ready to enter into what I heard I'm ready re to respond with the faith act I'm saying yes to my calling I know God loves 